Okay, there we go. Enough talking, we have to work. And I think we can just start with the tape. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. just had to record that. Alle Monde, fifth partita. That's this. Good okay.
gaat. Ja, how, how much tape is it? Not much, hè? Eh? Oké. Okay. Not much, but it's just, just, just a little bit. is going over its top and it shouldn't and the weather is changing see yeah I'll rewind the thing I just I just take a few seconds to and it's nothing you can do about it Because it's very strange when you though you can just make the you can de determine the color of the of the tone by tuning and normally when the instrument feels very at ease you have a little a rather wide margin where the two um, strings come unisono together and you can differ a little bit to the left or the right and depending what kind of sound you want, very dry, pure attack sound, what I like very much because it's anyway while, while playing is just making a little bit of differentiation later and that's... so if you tune all the, all the unisonos very much dry to the, to the, to the sec tone and then play, then the instrument blends together after a while. But now it's changing the temperature now. This margin becomes much closer. It's, it will be op open again, but you never know why, when. And then you have this predestined, predestined, what should I say that in English? So you have less choices to determine the color of that tone. And the problem is not that that one tone has its own color, but it should fit within the other. So when I play the B and go to the C sharp, you shouldn't hear too much of a differentiation. 
and for me that's a, the instrument should I shouldn't hear this while playing because that detracts me from the music eh? and, and certainly while making a recording also this B of this H whatever you want to call it Maybe I'm a little bit too much of perfectionist on that. Let's see. Transport the instrument to another location, you will have the same issues but multiplied by, by five. So that's one of the advantages of staying at home. That's Sophie running. And if we are ready in the kitchen. Yeah? Almost. Almost. Let not let uh, doesn't allow you to connect with it as much as um, a little of distance. Then. Okay. Can I stop? You just see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
battle with the clavichord. Don't be afraid of your instrument. It's a living thing, you know. It feels like.
I hope so. Very nice piece this. Oh. I like it when a little bit adding a little bit of elements of inequality in the beginning. So making those a little bit longer. But then the rhythm is going on in the left hand. So it's just the right hand that keeps uh, that holds the notes a little bit longer, it gives this nice feeling of them. I think what the 18th century rubato was. Mozart writes about that in the letter, but that's for another topic. Shall we just go to the Sarabande? Thank you. 
there was a noise at the end in the kitchen, can?
Just, just one bar now. It's up? Yes. Up, 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 it's up, it is up, it's over. Now I just wanted to, it's not important actually. Bar two, but I have it in the last take. I have several options here. It's a little bit tricky. It's a short appositura. The first edition, so yeah, it's right. So it, or this edition is right. But anyways, it's a strange situation there. I guess Bach would have liked to avoid this, which is a very nice effect actually. to play the right as I think way to play that but I would have liked to have just you're changing tape now I have to change the tape yeah of course I have to put more back yeah you were just sitting on your chair and doing nothing us. so I want to have this version also to choose from <laughs> exact same thing as in the second part here it is yeah there we have also an ornament i leave it out what actually is written is two times the same appoggiatura one with a bow and one with just the appoggiatura so very dramatic then and i just want to have those Two tiny things recorded. Because you have to imagine I'm only listening when you're playing, and as, as you are if you are a performer, you know what I'm talking about. But if you are playing, you are process processing the perception or the sound or the music of the production, whatever you want to call it, in a different way than when you're listening. It's a kind of real time. Uh, reflection on what you actually motorically are doing so your hands your eyes are reading it's being transferred to a motorical movement that is being adjusted all the time by listening so this one loop process which of course is something after years and years of practice you get used to but you will never I at least will I will, you'll never have the feeling, this exact same feeling as you have as a listener. So listening to the recordings tomorrow will give a slightly different view on some things. And of course, that's a great thing on the YouTube channel I have made now, I believe, maybe 110 recordings for YouTube. And so that's, most of them come very quick. So. In the evening recording, next day editing. So you get used to this feedback you get from your own, and that's. But you will never reach the level that you. Or level is not level. That's not the right word. You will. There is always a difference between listening to your to the recording you've made and making the recording. This process of constantly adjusting and reacting on what happens. It needs to be. Every time a new recording, a new piece. Not saying to forget everything what you've prepared for, because that would be the worst thing you can do. There's one thing that my teacher Jacques Knutnessen learned, learned us, and it's a great thing to remember. I remember that always. Never, never change things while playing a concert or playing a recording. You can find new elements, but overall, the pattern is, of course, what you have prepared for should have prepared for. So I guess now and then just those three, four bars and then I think for today it's enough. Then 
Next session will be the minuet, which is a beautiful piece. The Sarabon is very sober of this fifth partita, but in a way it's magic. In a way, it, I feel just this piece to be that you have to wait as long as you can to make a second beat, to have this tension going, very slow tempo. Then the Paschi and then of course the Jig, with for the for the fifth partita is also a very difficult one. So we will need some time for that. It's okay. 10.30. Okay, just record. It's, it's two minutes. Is it stopped? Yeah. This release is just difficult here. So the hand position is like that. I want to hold the D as it is indicated, and then you have to move here. But if you followed one of the practicing hours, the sessions, you know that if you you have an X of your hand, which gives um, the middle point of your arm weight, and if you go out of that, like here on the F sharp, it's difficult. And certainly when you have a release that takes for hours. So the sound is diminishing, 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 diminishing and almost nothing. And then of course the release comes. <laughs> difficult. Difficult, but I think we have it. Those are difficult things on clavichord. Okay. Let's see if my magical phone works because the other way, the other nights it didn't perform that well. So chat is rolling in. We're going to stop, Anya. Okay. If that's okay for you. Oh. He's a manager, you know. No, kidding. That's okay. So, see if I missed somebody. Philip, great to have you here. Champignon de Paris. Yes. Listening inside out. That's something you need to clarify for me. Um, my Aunt Rita, Tante Rita is here. Great, see if I missed some of the questions. Did I miss something? Um, oh, yeah, no, not, not really. No school tomorrow. So she, she enjoys very much here this session. She's so sad she has to be here tomorrow. Say just yes. She loves to go to school. Oh, that's great. That's super graag naar school gaat. Yeah. 
So Luca asks, if I hope the studio you're going to build will have good air conditioning, temperature and humidity, humidity control system for the instruments. Yes. Actually, we have to make decisions on the studio because we actually we, we can hit the go button for making the detailed plan so that's in small that's actually the fact it's not a small investment i answered something on that you answered okay just first check what on your answer uh, we have room in our living room kitchen what's that for an answer finally we have a little bit more room there no, yeah, but that's not what Luca asked. Huh? Luca asked what I, are you I, going to do with the humidity control? That, 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 that would be okay. Yeah. I made a big mistake of going to build that studio of hacking the plants. It's just to get rid of me here. No. But um, so we have to make the decision coming weeks if we're going to make the plans. That's the first thing to do because we have to, we need the plans for the studio in order to ask for prices. And first, I don't want to proceed without oversight of the whole project because um, it's an investment. Yes, yeah, it is a big investment and uh, well, it's going okay here, so... Uh, well, we have this room and this room sounds very nice, but for the productions we are doing now and the piano that's coming, it's very crowded here in instruments and then two pianos are not here not restored either but they're not here and i've two harmoniums i think one i gave to a friend i think it's now in southern france but anyway but to answer your question one of the things we have to take care and actually philip knew we'll have to look him up he has written he's the author of a, a one of the standard works on studio building he is a, going to his 70s so he will not be involved in the project itself as much because he lives in southern Spain and traveling is for him what it did became rather difficult but his son is also in the business so they will collaborate and so um, um, to ventilate that room it's of course not difficult to do that systems exist but to do it in a way that you don't have uh, noise so that the fans make no noise mm -hmm. and we visited some studios in Spain that he built and it's amazing Yes. You can turn it on full power and you, you feel the breeze, but you don't hear it. But the difficult thing of all of that is that they all put air conditionings in the studios. And air, con air conditionings, as you know, they are really great devices for cooling the room, but they uh, do that by drying the air. And drying is not so good. Cool. It's, it's bad for the instrument. So we can have a system with water cooling, which would be perfect. Would give us a possibility in the summer to cool about seven degrees and the winter heating about ten degrees. Combined with floor floor heating, that will be fine. But we don't know what that will cost. And I'm a little bit uh, afraid also to have a system working with water water on top of the instrument so if, if there is a leakage we can have a huge problem so that's certainly something we have to uh, take care of um, but it would be great to have that room completely isolated from the outside world and to have the possibility also to record in daytime mm -hmm. without being disturbed by cars or by dogs barking or any noise and yeah we see how that how the, why we proceed with that. So, Carol is also here. I missed him to say goodbye, Michael. You shouldn't be lazy to tune your clavichord. He writes, I would also have to retune my clavichord, but I'm too lazy. It depends also on what your what your expectation is from your instruments instrument. Like for instance, the builder of the instrument, Joris Potfliegen, he is a great tuner. Obviously, he's, he's a builder, but he tunes in a different way. He's a little bit more relaxed and letting the instrument find its own way. But I'm really, um, I want the instrument to have that even tonight, that in a right on spot of, of, how should I say that in English? So very well tuned in a dry way so that every tune has, every um, pair of strings is really tuned to its perfect pitch. But um, tonight it was a little bit, give a little bit more blue character to this already blue piece. I, that's color blue for me, the fifth partita, and that's something 
it's not out of tune it's i think it's perfect in tune but it gives a little bit more crisp sound more yeah other color and that's something you cannot change in one session that makes takes a few days <sighs> well okay i think that was it for tonight i thank you all for being here again i cannot repeat enough what difference makes your presence here to make these recordings it brings hopefully you agree the best out of me anyway i'm focused and concentrated as i think i would probably not be in a way when i would uh, be just on my own with anya here and sophie so thank you all for that i really appreciate that and you make a difference in this project as you do with everything on what I, what we are doing now and probably tomorrow it's monday we'll have another session so 9 30 pm central european time thanks all of you and see you later okay bye, bye.